Giants should be on the endangered species list. The Grim Reaper is a greedy bastard, and he appears to have a taste for giants. Three things that Vance always had for you were big smiles, bad jokes, and great stories. He was as stubborn as a two-assed mule, but he was always interested in what you had to say. Unless you happen to mention that only consuming cigarettes, soda, and potato chips wasn't a good idea for a person in their 80th decade on this planet. Then, not so much. Vance was always chuckling and seemed to be in his happy place, BSing, bench racing, and building in his shop that's in the back of his house. So, feeling this to be an appropriate venue, Vance's good friends and artists, I'm also lucky to count them as friends, Jeff Williams, Brett Mason, and Ben Sizowski, brought into Vance's shop a plain black box and made it Vance worthy. Along with some really cool hot rods being built and painted in that space, Vance's last ride was striped and lettered with the only name that's ever been on his race cars, a compulsion. Vance was a giant. Oh, I don't mean physically, although he was well above six foot tall. I mean, he lived life large. He did more in his lifetime than a dozen men his age. He truly loved his wife, who loved him until she died and his three kids, Don, Kim, and Lance. He built his own hot rods. He wrenched on race teams. He drag raced. He raced on the Bonneville Salt Flat, so he rubbed elbows with a lot of the biggest names in motorsports, including NASCAR. He was tickled about the article about him in Hemmings, but he always seemed to move the conversation to other people's accomplishments. And he had a mountain of photo albums with stories for each picture. He loved to bring me back to each time in his life when you could tell from the pictures he was having the time of his. I really enjoyed being transported back to eras that I'd only heard of and dreamt of as a car guy. That is, until I started to hear stories repeated. And then it was, oh my gosh, Vance, look what time it is. I gotta go. I was a fool. You'd think I would have learned... My dad passed away 15 years ago this year. I've never really written about him because his passing still angers me and chokes me up. Hell, I can't even do a portrait of him yet. What saddens me the most, apart from the obvious, is that when a person dies, all their experiences and knowledge is just gone. My dad was one of the smartest guys I've ever met. I was very lucky to get the chance to spend a great deal of time with him, where he could teach me most of the skills I still employ today. But it was just a fraction of what he knew and his experiences. He started his own company and designed and built his own equipment because he was the first in his field. And even though I spent a lot of time with him, I was a kid. I had kid things I wanted to do that were way more important than spending time listening to my dad. Too many times I said, gee, dad, look at the time. I gotta go. I was a fool. I was a fool. My dad was also one of the giants. He was a salt of the earth kind of guy who knew electronics, hydraulics, pneumatics, engineering, mechanics, and apparently how reproduction works. He was a big guy, about six foot and a solid 250, with hands like canned hams, ever-present cigar and whiskers akin to a wire brush. He looked like he'd be more at home falling trees in the northwest or hauling up anchor chains in the Bering Sea. But I remember how easy it was. He'd use those big mitts to pat us on the back when we did well and gently encourage us when we needed it. He could have kicked my ass back to a fetus, but that's just not the way he was. Oh, he got mad at the seven of us, six boys and one girl, but we were always more afraid of him being disappointed in us than in him laying a hand on us. That is what kept us miscreants in line. Why am I telling you about my dad and Vance? Because all of our giants are dying and I'm afraid we're losing so much knowledge 
in history by not learning as much as we can from them. I'm also afraid there aren't many giants coming up behind to replace them. In this throwaway world, the number of replacement giants more resemble a row of hen's teeth than shark's teeth. Who today would you consider a giant or a titan? Men of means. And by that I don't mean money, I mean abilities, know-how, skills, experience, people that know how things work, and not just how to work buttons. Are there any pioneers, any more smoky eunuchs that are coming down the pike? I don't know. So I say screw the double-nippled pygmy hippopotamuses and the yellow-eyed blue-holed penguins. We need to put giants on the endangered species list. And go call your dad or your Vance or any of your other heroes and listen to their stories. Better yet, record their stories for posterity in the rest of the world before you can't. Because I'd give a lot to hear one of Vance's stories again and to hear him chuckle. I'd give anything to hear my dad's voice once more. Even if it was just fee fi fo fung